Ethiopia, where the country has declared a national day of mourning to mark the deaths of four top officials and what the government is saying were coordinated killings as part of a coup attempt in the northern Amhara state. On Saturday night, an officer and the chief of staff of the Army, General Sier Mekonen, were shot dead by his own bodyguard in the capital, Addis Ababa. In Amhara itself, the regional governor, Abachu Mekonen, was killed along with his senior advisor. The federal government says the coup attempt had been led by the head of the security in Amhara, who is said to be on the run. In a measure they took against the region's leadership, who were on a meeting, the region's president, Honorable Dr. Ambachiu Mekonen, and his advisor, Mr. Azezu Wesie, have lost their lives. Mr. Mikbaru Kebede, another member of the leadership and the region's general attorney, who was also in the same meeting, was wounded and is receiving care at hospital. In parallel to this, with a difference of few hours, the chief of staff of the army, General Seare Mekonen, along with his friend, a retired Major General Gezai Abera, both lost their lives in an organized and coordinated attack by the bodyguard. All right, we are joined by Dr. Francis Onditi, a conflict resolution expert and head of the Department of School of International Relations and Diplomacy, Riara University here in Kenya, Nairobi. Doctor, thank you for joining us here on Africa Live. First things first, let's dig into it. Doctor, Ethiopia's army chief and top regional officials were killed in a northern coup attempt. What does this really mean, though, for the stability of Ethiopia? Um, uh, we would say, Richard, uh, the country Ethiopia is, um, is undergoing what you could call a, a crossroad. Mm -hmm. It is a crossroad because on one side, uh, the Prime Minister Abiy has been very much um, very uh, honest of bringing reforms, economic and political reforms in that country. But on the other side, we seem to be having a dissent that is coming very, very quickly um, from different communities. Um, what has happened in the Amhara region, I think is an unfortunate situation. It's likely to really um, uh, mitigate against the efforts that the Prime Minister has been putting in place. But having said that, I think Ethiopia with the coup d'etat, it's not a new thing. It's something that used to happen several decades ago. But for this particular uh, situation, I think uh, one of the things that uh, Ethiopia Prime Minister has to do is to relook into the, uh, you know, the federal, uh, federal arrangement or federal government structure that exists because seemingly uh, some federal states feels like they are excluded out. The, what we are seeing are just symptoms of dissent or symptoms of uh, uh, feeling that they are not part and parcel of the reforms of the government uh, that uh, Prime Minister Dr. Abiy uh, formed in that country. Dr. Dizzy, let's talk about this a little more, though. Ethiopia's administration has named General Asamnu Sige as, the, as being responsible for the foiled coup. Now, he was released from prison last year, just last year, and having been given amnesty over a similar coup attempt. Mm. I mean, what does this really mean for PM's reforms? Can you speak to us about that? Yeah, the PM is caught actually between the, the, the hard place and, uh, you know, a rock because um, as much as he would want to extend the olive branch, that um, part of the reform is to make sure that... Uh, the people who were jailed uh, without a trial uh, are brought out. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the realization or the indication that we, we are getting out of this picture is that uh, um, they are not appreciating um, you know, the effort that the prime minister is trying to put across. And therefore, um, you know, the hangovers of uh, socialism is, is very ripe in, in, in Ethiopia. Uh, as much as the prime minister would want to have reform and uh, being a democrat and trying to see whether the, the country changes its political regime, it's going to be a little bit tougher uh, for uh, Dr. Abi. Yeah. Well, the elections are just right around the corner. I want to ask you what impact you think this coup will have on that and what will the prime minister's actions be going forward, would you say? We are likely to see quite a, a, a number of unrest in different spots of that country. It's not going to rest um, right now, especially now that uh, the country is gearing for elections. Um, perhaps what the prime minister needs to do is perhaps to concentrate more inside and try to see how 
the different federal states or federal governments uh, can strengthen their political uh, will um, and, and perhaps uh, try to uh, see whether the representation from different federal uh, governments is made more stronger. Because, you know, what he did um, was trying to look at the country from a national perspective. Um, forgetting that the Ethiopia, the country Ethiopia, is really a federal go a federal state, uh, which means you need to strengthen the federal federal government mm. more than even the national government. If you don't do that, then um, you are likely to experience uh, challenges that uh, Dr. Abi is going through right now. All right, Dr. Francis Onditi, we have so many questions, but so little time. We'd like to thank you for joining us here on Africa Live. That was Dr. Francis Onditi, conflict and resolution expert here in Nairobi.